This is Pastor Mike Brunner of Bible Christian Center in Slipper Rock. First of all, I'd like to extend an invitation to you if you're in the Slipper Rock area to come to our service Sunday 1030 at the Slipper Rock Park Building. And also, as you're ready to enter in and, and listen to the Word of God regarding this service, I want to share with something with you I believe will be of great help to you. Everything we do at Abba Christian Center is in the context of intimacy with Jesus Christ. God wants you to know this. He died not just so you could have eternal life, but that His life will become your life. What do I mean by that? 2 Peter 1, 3 and 4 says, He's called you to partake of His glory and virtue of His divine nature. It means that the very faith of God, He, he wants it to be in you. Romans 12, 3, Galatians 2, 20, the very love of God uh, that caused Him to die for you. He wants that same love to be in you. Romans 5, 5. He wants the very life intrinsic to his own being because you're his literal child. He wants his life glory to God to become your life. He wants his faith to be your faith. His love to be your life. His wisdom be your wisdom. His compassion to be your compassion. You say that's almost too good to be true. I want to tell you something. Jesus Christ is too good to be true for your mind. That's why he's given you a heart to believe, I trust that with your heart you'll enter into the message today knowing that he died that his life might become your life. And today, it will enter my heart, my mind, my emotions, and my body, conforming me to the image of Jesus Christ, to the glory of God. 
Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I'll tell you what. Worship was amazing. Amen. I know God changed my life. And I'll tell you what, through that worship time. Glory to God. Woo. Hallelujah. Amen. And that word that i tell you what, about the strong spiritual spine, i tell you what, it's powerful. Amen. All right, go with me to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 13, if you would. We're, going, we're entering in to another message on grace and glory. And we shared that from Psalm 84, that God gives grace and glory. It's one of our major proof texts. And that you can't enter in to the glory of God, you can't enter in to walking in victory without the grace of God. And we said the grace of God is unmerited favor and divine ability. Amen? Glory to God. And there's so much there. How many know that you and I are lightning rods for God? And the natural, a lightning rod, is something that's made of a certain material that obviously attracts lightning. And then it's grounded so that lightning goes into that rod rather than hitting your house or hitting you. Amen. So it goes into that rod. But God wants you to know you're a lightning rod because you're his child. Amen. Someone says, why does the Holy Ghost move on my behalf? Why does grace come? Because you're a child of God. Amen? Glory to Jesus. It's as simple as that. Hallelujah. I mean, how come you get hungry and want to eat? It's because God's given you a stomach. God's made you in a way, amen, that you need food and you desire food. I mean, it's as simple as that. Glory to God. You are a lightning rod for God. God's presence his lightning, hallelujah, you attract his presence and it comes simply because of who you are to him. Amen? Say this with me. Say, I'm a lightning rod for the Holy Ghost. I attract the presence and power of God. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. All right. That's grace. Amen? Hallelujah. Before I enter into... Uh, Elaborating on uh, the word Ephesians 3, 13 to 20. I, I want to share with you that one scripture verse revealed to you can do a whole lot in your life. I mean, one word from God can change your life forever. And I want you to think about this for next Sunday. We're going to do something real simple during worship. I want you to get some different verses. If someone said to you, what are the verses I mean that really get you excited? What are the verses that really pump you up that you live by? I mean, if you can come up with five, that's awesome. But if you could only come up with one, that's fine too. I mean, I could share with you some verses that just, I, I mean, to kind of float my boat. Amen? John 17, 26. Uh, Jesus said, I've declared thy name and will declare it unto those that you've given me that the love that you love me with may be in, me, in them and I in them. And, and different verses I have. But I want you to come up with, I want you to write down for next Sunday. And if you forget to do this, it's, it's, I mean, it's okay. You can just say it. But what we're going to do is doing, just as we worship, in the Bible there's something called a wave offering. And a wave offering doesn't mean like you just wave at somebody, okay, like the queen. You know, that's not what we're talking about, all right? <laughs> a wave offering, what they would do, they would wave their sheaves when, as a sign of harvest unto God. That they would worship God in a wave offering, they would wave their sheaves. Glory to God. Mm. And because it represents harvest. So just during, during worship time, I just want you to take that piece of paper that you write one verse or five verses on and just don't worship just wave it before God amen just wave it glory to God and confess that these verses are bringing harvest for you amen now that sounds simple but sometimes when you act something out and you do it it registers on your spirit amen glory to God that's something simple but and you could do it at home amen just, just before God, you alone or you and your spouse or whatever, and just, just wave the scriptures before God. 
and confess harvest in Jesus' name. Amen? Glory to God. All right. Amen. Ephesians 3, 13 to 20. And we've shared all the time on, if you want to grow in the Lord, one easy way to do it is pray the Ephesian prayers. Ephesians 1, 16 to 23. Ephesians uh, 3, 14 to 20. I'll tell you, they're amazing prayers. Glory to God. Let's start with verse 13. It says, Wherefore I desire that you faint not at tribulations for you, uh, which is your glory. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, personalize it, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, we're talking about glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, and you might be rooted and grounded in love. Then it goes down unto verse 20. It says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Glory to God. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus. Throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. All right. Now, we're going to really look at this verse in a, a very strong fashion. And to do so, go with me, if you would, glory to God, to Isaiah chapter 11. We've looked at this verse, and rightly so, in a number of contexts. And we'll do it so in the context today, in the context of the Ephesians prayer of 314 to 20. Isaiah 11, we'll start with verse 1. And we're going to go over what's commonly referred to as the sevenfold spirit that was on Jesus. Uh, in the book of Revelation, it talks about the, se the sevenfold spirit that is before the throne of God, which is commensurate with Isaiah 11, 1 to 3. So let's look at this. It says, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, that's of course Jesus, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of the Lord, that's number one, Nothing is going to work for you in your Christian walk unless it comes through the Spirit of God. Amen? And that's what ministry is about. If someone's a, a, a fruitful ministry, whether it's a, a apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, whether it's music, whatever it is, whatever you do, it has to come through the Spirit of God. Amen? It has to come through the Spirit of God. You and I, without the Spirit of God, I, I tell you what, we're, we're just like, a, a, honestly, a, a branch blown in the wind. I, I tell you, somebody might have a lot of hype and a lot of pomp and circumstance, but if, it, if it's not anointed, honestly, then, then it really isn't worth, it's not worth the paper it's written on. The only thing that's worth anything is that which is anointed, which comes through the Spirit of God. Amen? And we need to know the difference when, of someone that's ministering in the flesh, even if they're gifted, and you when you're in the flesh and I'm in the flesh, or when we're in the Spirit. Amen? So it's, it says that, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Glory to God. The Holy Ghost is looking for a resting place like the dove that was sent out, amen, by Noah. He's looking for a resting place. He's not come just to visit. He's come to abide. Amen? amen? Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, it's a lot easier to, to, it's a lot harder to raise children than grandchildren. Amen. Do you know why? Because your children are with you all the time. Your grandkids just visit. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I tell you, I love my grandkids. Amen. But if they're getting bad, I can send them home. Amen. Glory to God. When you're raising children, you can't do that because they're already home. Amen. All right. Just having some fun. Glory to God. Amen. But in all honesty, the Holy Ghost needs a place to abide. He does not want just to come to visit. He wants to live in you and every room in your house. Just not two rooms. He wants in every room in your house. All right. It goes on to say the Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom, mm. the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And it shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. 
He shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. That's the spirit of might. And with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Again, that's the spirit of might. Now, what we need to understand is that when you're reading Ephesians 3, it's in the context of Isaiah 11, 1 to 3. When it talks about that he would grant to us according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, we are on holy ground. I remember uh, one time David Hogan was here and I was having lunch with him. And uh, he's a tough guy, you know what I'm saying? Former Hell's Angel, whatever type of deal. And, but he's a good guy and, you know, it's raised over, I don't know, three, 400 people from the dead and all documented. And we're at lunch and we're getting a sandwich and, and he just said, what do you want from me? Like that. And I'm thinking, gee, you know what I'm saying? I said, well, I want to enter in to a greater anointing in the context of signs and wonders. And he has that. And uh, he's just a tough guy. He, he turned to Isaiah 11, threw it where we're eating, and he said, he looked at me. Man, I thought his eyes were, he said, the spirit of might. I said, okay. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. But you know, the Holy Ghost, the sphere of the Lord, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of knowledge, understanding, wisdom. It all is unto the spirit of might. Because if you have knowledge, understanding, and wisdom, but you don't have might, you don't have anything. Because the gospel, according to Romans 1.16, is the power of God unto salvation. Amen? You can talk about Jesus. You can say, I know this and understand this. But if it does not translate into power, amen, then what good is it? Amen? It's one thing to teach. It's another thing to preach. It's one thing to preach. It's another thing to have your preaching confirm with power. Amen? There's a lot of good teachers. But to be honest with you, they never enter into proclamation. There's a lot of good preachers. But you know what? If your teaching and preaching does not translate into power, and guess what? Your teaching and preaching are going to be in vain. Amen. That's strong, but that's for real. So God's saying here that according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus, it only comes through Jesus, that he's praying whew, that we would be strengthened with the might of God. Ephesians 6.10 says, Be strong in the Lord in the power of His, what? Might. Glory to God. If you're walking in weakness, now, now, it's one thing when you're, you know, you just don't feel God and you're going through a challenge and you feel weak. When you're weak, you're strong, the Bible says. But if, if you're walking in weakness in the context of just not winning battles because it seems like the devil's stronger than you, then you know that you're walking in your own strength or not simply not entering into the wisdom of God, like it says in Isaiah 11, to walk in the strength of God. It makes a difference, amen, when you walk in his strength. Have you ever walked in your own strength? It doesn't get you real far, does it? Amen? Have you ever just... Man, it's just like you're not connecting. It's like the strength of God's not there. It doesn't work. But man, when you're walking in the strength of God, man, alive, it's amazing. Amen? You're not cowardly. You're courageous. You're not selfish. You are, man, thinking about that other person. 
and you're not afraid, amen, you're expected. I shared this before one time. We had, uh, uh, we are ministering to a, a woman. She came to our trailer, and she was doing her wash at her trailer, and uh, her husband was, uh, he, he sold drugs big time in our, our, our community. And uh, so Kathy spent quite a bit of time with her and helped her wash her clothes. And uh, So we're driving back, Kathy and I and her, and she said, when my husband's going to kill you. And this guy is not, just out of his mind in, in a lot of ways. And I said, really? And, uh, and uh, I said, because I spent too long, you know, up at your house with your wife washing my clothes. You'd think you'd be thankful. And, uh, and I knew he had a bunch of guns. So bottom line is I, I'm, we're driving there, probably about 10-minute drive from our trailer to town, maybe a little longer. And uh, so as we're driving, I'll be honest with you, man, I started to get afraid because I knew the guy. And uh, he was a tough guy, and he was out of his mind. So, uh, man, I'm thinking, God help me, God help me, God help me. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it's at times like that your Christianity has to be real. Uh, One of my best friends, he... uh, got his pastor's degree or from Melody Land in California. And he was, him and another guy from Melody Land, they were, and another friend of mine who was a pastor, they were ministering to uh, a, 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 a brother and sister. And their dad was in the mafia, I mean, for real. And uh, they were helping him move to an apartment because they accepted Jesus. And uh, one guy's name was Sam, he was, uh, and another guy with name was Dennis, but... Uh, as they were helping move in, they saw this car going up and down. I mean, real mafia stuff. And they saw a guy with a machine gun. <laughs> and my friend, who's a pastor, Dennis, he said to Sam, he said, Sam, he said, did you have to put your armor on today? He looked at Dennis. He said, four or five times, brother, four or five times. <laughs> Amen. Amen. When it's for real, i tell you what, you need the grace of God. When it's for real, you need the might of God. Amen. Well, I'll be honest with you. So we're driving, and she keeps saying what he's going to do to me, etc. So I finally, I said, God, I just ask for your grace to enter in to, to your strength, not to be cowardly, because uh, we, could have, we could have just, she had a basket full of clothes. I said, I'll take them up for you. I could have cowardly said, well, we'll see you. You know what I'm saying? But I knew that if she walked in that door, he was going to beat her up big time. So I said, I'll go first. And uh, the Holy Ghost come on me as I was walking up those steps. I mean, the, the, the might of God. And uh, there's a bunch of steps she had to get to his upstairs apartment. His door was open. I walked in there. And the Holy Ghost come on me. And he, I don't know what, he had a gun or this and that and a lot of drugs there. And I, I just shared the gospel with him. But I said, you know what? I, I just said, man, she's trying to help you washing the clothes. You don't even have a washer or dryer. And I said, you know, and the Holy Ghost, I mean, for 10 minutes, I, I just reamed this guy out, you know, in the Holy Ghost. But what I'm saying is, in our own strength, it's not going to work. You're not going to share the gospel like you should in boldness. It only comes, amen, through his strength. Amen. He's the vine, you're the branches. Amen. Last time I looked, branches didn't do real good on their own if they weren't connected, amen, to the vine. Amen? Glory to God. So this is what this is about. He's saying the spirit of might is going to come on you. Woo, hallelujah. Like it did Samson. The spirit of might is going to come on you. Like it did for Jesus according to Isaiah 11. See, we need not just to read the word. We need to read the word. That's why I asked you about that wave offering next Sunday. We need to read the word. In a way that, man, whoo, it really penetrates you. So it takes you from who you are in your own strength, which is not good, to his strength. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So it says, the spirit of might will come on you. Woo. Now listen to this. By his spirit, in Isaiah 11, 1, 1, isn't that the first thing we looked at? It says, the spirit of the Lord will rest on him. 
the spirit of might will manifest in your life through the Holy Ghost. Now what I want us to see, he's using Isaiah 11, 1 as a reference. So he's saying the spirit of God is going to manifest in your life like it did to Jesus. Acts 10.38, how God anointed Jesus. That's the Spirit of God. How God anointed Jesus with what? The Holy Ghost and what? The Holy Ghost and might. Woo! See, the Gospels are about Jesus. The epistles, hallelujah, are about Jesus and you. Amen? Amen. amen, amen. Woo, glory. Amen, it really will. Glory to God. The gospel is about Jesus. So you can see how Jesus lived. But the epistles are about you living like Jesus did. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Who are the saints of Jesus. Glory to God. So it says the spirit of might will come on you through the Holy Ghost. Now listen to this. In the inward man. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. I don't think anybody can understand the power the, uh, in the reality of the Holy Spirit being one, being in your spirit. 1 Corinthians 6, 17, He who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with Him. Hallelujah. Woo! Man alive. Glory to God. Man, see, it's one thing. Let's, for example, let's say you have a, a truck. There's some people like Chevys, some like Fords, you know what I'm saying? Amen. And we'll pray for all you people like Chevys. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I'm just kidding. I'm not just kidding. Amen. But let's say you have a strong truck. Amen. And it, I mean, it can pull a half a ton. Well, it's one thing for that truck to be able to lift that weight. Amen? What if that, that power of that truck was in you? And you could lift a high time. I'll tell you what, you'd be real special, wouldn't you? <laughs> Amen? That's how it was with Samson. Glory to God. Where we go to Sight and Sound down in Lancaster? How many of you have ever been there? Sight and Sound in Lancaster? Boy, if you have, it's, I tell you, it's really good. It's just, man, and, but they had a play about Samson, and it was like, but it was just, Samson literally carried the walls of the city on his shoulders. We're talking 10 ton. Talk about a pickup truck. We're talking 20,000 pounds, for real. He put 20,000 pounds on his shoulders and carried it outside the city. How did he do that? Because the spirit of might was on him in the physical realm. We're talking about the spirit of might under faith and love in this context. Wow. Glory to God. Wow. Man alive. See, Samson had seven locks of hair on his head. Representing the sevenfold spirit that was on Jesus. Commensurate with the seven spirits that are on the throne of God in Revelation. But Samson only entered into one of the seven. That's why he didn't have character most of his life. Glory to God. Wow. So this is saying. Paul was praying. That the church, those he's discipling, might enter into the spirit of might through the Holy Ghost in the inward man and the faith and love. Woo! Glory to God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Mm. Hallelujah. Now, just to give another scripture, because I always try to give different scriptures. Acts 6, 3, 5, and 8 is a type of this. 
Mm. It's talking about Stephen. It says, he was a man filled with the Holy Ghost in wisdom. Same two attributes in Isaiah 11. Always starts with the Holy Ghost. But as he entered into the Holy Ghost and wisdom, it says he then entered in to a spirit of faith and the Holy Ghost. Then in verse 8 it says he became a man woo, of faith and power, faith and might. Like we said, it will always lead to might. Because the gospel is power. That's what differentiates it, amen, from anything else. Religion doesn't bring power. It brings a form of power, but a form of godliness, but denies what? The power. Glory to God. So now, God's saying, just like the spirit of might manifested through Samson in the physical realm, the spirit of might through the Holy Ghost in your spirit will manifest under faith. The same faith that Jesus had. Because it's the same spirit that Jesus had. It's the same spirit of might that Jesus had. It's the same spirit. Amen? Woo! Knowledge, understanding, wisdom. Glory to God. Counsel. Fear of God. Wow! But it's talking about you. If you ever got Man, what this message was saying and I've regarded it, we'd never again be the same. You know why? Because we'd enter into being the real us in Christ. Amen? I tell you what, you can't enter in the power without faith. Faith and power. Because when you believe, what do you believe in? You're believing in this. That, whoo, the spirit of might will manifest in your life through the Holy Ghost inside of you. Our faith is not in ourselves. Wow, our faith isn't because I've got a doctorate in theology. Man. I'm all for education. Amen. But education without the Holy Ghost is nothing. And that includes Christian education. And that includes seminaries and Bible schools. If it's not through the Holy Ghost, it, it doesn't matter. I have a lot of friends with PhDs, and it's good if it's in the Holy Ghost. But I told one of my friends who's not a Christian, I said, you know what your BS is? He said, what? I said, it's BS. <laughs> he said, what? I said, you know what your MS is? He said, what? I said, it's more the same. He said, I said, do you know what your PhD is? He said, what? I said, it's piled higher and deeper. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and that's what it is without the Holy Ghost. Amen. God will take the foolish things of the world, the weak things of the world, and he'll make those people great. You know why? Because they know it's not about them. It's about him. Amen. It's about the spirit of might through the Holy Ghost in the inward man, under the faith of Jesus in you. See, this is why we need to pray this prayer every day. This is why we need to enter into meditating on this. Wow. Glory to God. Man, when you enter into the faith of God, it's amazing, isn't it? Wow. And, and there are days where I mean, you don't feel like you have faith, do you? I mean, there are days, man, I feel like my faith, you know, became a burden, flew away. You know what I'm saying? There are days where I feel weak. There are days when, man, I'm ministering to someone with cancer in the last stages. And, man, I don't sense nothing. But you know what? I know that the faith of God is there because I believe this verse. I believe this verse. I believe in the glory realm. Woo! This is my inheritance. I believe that this is the gospel. Christ in me, the hope of glory. I believe that the gospel, woo, is the spirit of might 
manifested in me by the Holy Ghost in my spirit under faith and I believe I have it even when I don't feel it because the Bible says I have it. Glory to God. I can't tell you how many times. Man, it didn't seem like it was there but it became my salvation. Amen? There are a lot of times where you don't feel like you've got faith. You don't feel like you have love. Amen? Man, somebody hit your car and then they say they didn't hit it and start cursing you out when you ask for the insurance information. Do you feel like loving them right there? Amen? Not unless the Holy Ghost is manifested. Amen? Lord, someone's talking trash about you. Man, when you've blessed them, do you feel like loving them at the moment? Not usually. But what happens? You put on Christ. Amen? By faith, you believe that the spirit of might is on you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Whoo, glory. When I was in college, I, one of my roommates, his name Conrad Zelensky, sounds like a weightlifter. He's a tough kid. He had all the records for weightlifting at, at SRU. And he's a real nice kid. And we're roommates. The only bad thing is he talked in his sleep, but he walked in his sleep. For real. And this kid could bench press. I mean, he was about 200 pounds, just stocky. He could bench press almost 500 pounds. And he, he had the thing where you just lifted up the deadlift. He could do like 1,200 pounds. And you added them up together. And there was another lift, there was a bench, there was a deadlift, and there was another one. And he had, I mean, he'd win all these contests. And man, I tell you what, sometimes in the night, he'd get out of his bed and he's going like this. And I'm thinking, my God, he's going to pick me up and bench me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Whoo, that's how my faith grew in college. Glory to God. In Jesus' name, you won't say amen. And glory to God. He'd wake up in the morning. I said, do you know you almost bench pressed me? He said, what are you talking about? I said, oh, Jesus. Amen. We were only roommates for one semester. <laughs> That's why glory to God. I said, get your own room. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, but I said that to say this. This kid had some might with him. Really. He had some might. This might that God's talking about is infinitely greater than that. And what I want to let you know, it's always there. That's good, man. It's always there whether you feel it or not. It's there because God said it's there. And it's there to the degree that you've cultivated by meditating on this and believing by the grace of God you have it. Woo! Glory to Jesus. Someone says, you're stoked up today. I am. Glory to God because this is for real. Because if you have the faith of Jesus, first of all, you can walk through the fire and not get burned. You will be courageous rather than cowardly. And I tell you, we need men to be courageous. We need women to be courageous too. Like Mahesh Shavda says, the daughter of a lion is as much a lion as a, as a son of a lion. But men especially need to take their place and be strong. Amen? That's the truth. Man, the world is trying to minimize the manhood of men. They really are. We need to be strong and courageous. Lord to God. But man, I, I tell you, you enter into the reality of this. Wow. Man, it'll change your life. You know, we use Samson as an example. You know, Samson was a Nazarite from his, you know, the mother's womb. You know, didn't drink any, and the anointing was on him. But he didn't know the anointing was on him at all. He's like, he's just like one of the other kids. And then one day he's walking home from school. And man, there's a young lion that gets in his way and is attack him. And he picks up the lion and just rips this lion up. And he's thinking, whoa. He comes home. Mama says, how was school? <laughs> he said, school was all right. And by the way, I ripped the lion in pieces. See, he entered into a cognizance of something that he had the version nobody else did. Amen? We need to enter in through the grace of God, only through the grace of God. 
And we need to worship Jesus for the reality of this. Woo, glory to God. We need it. And I find it's amazing the number of people that don't meditate on this. Yeah, I'm meditating on the little toe, the left foot of the beast. Why? Why? Again, I'm not against studying Revelation in the last days. I'm all for it. One of my main mentors after I got saved, he was a man of, I mean, the prophetic in the last days, he was amazing. Reverend Joseph Jeremiah, I mean, he was just amazing. But what I want us to understand, this is what we meditate on. Someone says, I'm having a hard time loving somebody. Go back to this and say, start confessing. The spirit of might is in my spirit through the Holy Ghost and I have the same love that caused the Father to send His only begotten Son to die for me. I've got the same love that caused Jesus to stay on the cross when He was going through the hell that He was going through. I've got the same love, glory to God, that God Himself has. It's been shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Ghost through this reality. Amen? Amen. Someone says, well, I, I just don't have this and I don't have this. I don't have self-control. I don't have purity. I don't have boldness. I don't have wisdom. I don't have strength. What prayer are you reading? What prayer are you praying? What are you declaring? Amen? Well, I'm just a Roman 7 man. The things I want to do, I can't do. Things that I don't want to do, I end up doing. Wow, if I was you, I'd get rid of that man. Amen? And trade it in for another. Amen? Amen. And the Romans 8 man that Jesus died for you to be. Amen? Glory to God. Don't shut me down when I'm teaching good today. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Whew, this is good teaching. This is Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now it says in verse 20, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Let's look at that. Now unto him that is able. I, I think the Apostle Paul, he's just being a vehicle of the Holy Ghost. Amen. If I write something down with my pen, I mean the pen in one way wrote it, but I'm the one that wrote it. Amen. Paul was just a pen. Amen. It was the Holy Ghost that wrote the book. Amen. Someone says, you know, that Paul wrote. Well, he was the pen that God used. But it was the Holy Ghost that wrote it. I'm, I'm, I could just see, you know, the Apostle Paul say, Now unto him that is able, and he's going to stop there. And the Holy Ghost said, No. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly. Amen. Exceedingly means beyond. So he's getting ready to stop there. And the Holy Ghost says, no, don't stop there. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly. Woo! And the Holy Ghost says, don't stop there. Unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all. Woo! Now that takes in everything, doesn't it? And he didn't stop there. That we even ask or think. Now listen, but here's the key. According to the power. What's that word power? Might. According to the might that works in you. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. Mm. It's in you. The might of God is in you. On the faith, on the love. And of course, under all the fruits of the Spirit. Glory to Jesus. This is what we need to meditate on. This is the foundation of everything. This is the cornerstone. Anything you read in the Word has got to be judged by this. Glory to God. When God tells you to do something, judge it by this. And you say, I can't. Judge it by this and say you can. Amen? Shh. When God tells you to forgive when it's hard. Don't judge it by your flesh. What you feel, what you think. Can I tell you something? I'm going to say something strong. I said a few things already strong, amen. God really doesn't care what you feel. 
And he really doesn't care what you think in your natural mind. All he cares about is what he thinks. Amen? And he knows for you to be blessed, you've got to line up with what he thinks. I don't feel worthy. Join the club. I don't feel like God's with me. Join the club. I don't think that this can work. Join the club in my natural mind. But it will work. I am worthy because God said as I am. And through the spirit of might, I know it. Glory to God. You know, I can think of people, just regular people, some of them young teenagers, that have done great things for God because they entered into the grace of God that translates into these verses we're reading. When I was in uh, high school, one of the kids that helped lead me to the Lord, in fact, he spoke at our church years ago. Uh, his name's Mark. And before we were saved, really, I, I, I hated this kid. I really did. He hated me. Now, when, I, when we were in school, I remember when I was in ninth grade, we were having a little tussle, you know, in gym class. And our gym teacher is a football coach. I had him when I played football when I was a junior. And he come out, he gave me boxing gloves, for real. He gave him boxing gloves. And he said, I'm giving you five minutes. And man, I come up bloody, he come up bloody. That was old school, you know what I'm saying? And the boxing gloves aren't like they were, they, they had these uh, strings on them. Man, if you got hit, they cut you. And I, you know what, that was the last time we tussled in gym class. But I didn't like him, he didn't like me, you know what I'm saying? But he got saved. He was in a lot of drugs, a lot of stuff, he got saved. Told me about Jesus. And I really didn't like the messenger, to be honest with you. But I had to receive the message. And then we became really good friends. I accepted the Lord. And, but I said that to say this, that he was dating a girl, I think, uh, his senior in high school. She was from another high school. And nice girl. And she uh, drove home with two kids. And she was a junior. These kids were seniors. And these kids were drunk. She didn't know it at the time. But they had been drinking during school. And they were drunk and uh, car crashed and she died. And I'll never forget, because this kid's, I mean, we're, we're talking, to, he's a tough kid, Mark. I mean, really tough kid. I mean, and uh, we're going to share the gospel at a, uh, it was a carnival. It's a big fair in Springdale, Pennsylvania, close to where you were. And they had a huge carnival like for a week. And so we're going to share the gospel, passing out tracks. It was uh, right at the end of our senior year. where I had just gotten saved. And uh, we saw these two kids that were responsible for this girl dying. And uh, I know what this kid's like in the flesh. I know what I'm like in the flesh. I'm thinking, in all honesty, he's going to pull a knife on these kids. And it's not going to be a good deal. And uh, I'll never forget, he's, he, they're walking toward, I don't think they saw him, and he, I, I saw, you know, and he, uh, they crossed paths, and, and the love of Jesus came. He said, I forgive you, but I just need to share Jesus with you. You know what that is? An 18-year-old kid, that's a spirit of might. That's a spirit of might. We are without excuse we have no excuse to walk in the flesh. And someone says, yeah, I understand, you know, there are days we're not going to be perfect, but we're, not, we're without excuse not to live right. If an 18-year-old kid that come out of, what he come out of? What I come out of? If the love of God could flow through him, that wasn't him, man. That was, that was Jesus. That was the spirit of might but through the Holy Ghost in the inward man manifesting the love of Jesus to those kids. Wow. And all of us, we've walked in that love. Amen. The key is to walk in it consistently. Amen. Do not let someone get your goat. Amen. It's not good when someone gets your goat when you're a lamb. Amen. Glory to God. It's the daily to put on Jesus. Well, I don't have time to put on Jesus. Well, thankfully, y'all had time to put on your clothes today. Amen. Thank God for that. Amen. Whew. My gosh, when we call it instead of fruit of the spirit church, we call it the fruit of the loom church. Amen. 
No, y'all, you took time to put your clothes on. You need to take time to put on Jesus. Amen? You and I don't look so good when it's us and not Jesus. Well, I didn't have time to get in the Word today. I didn't have time to get in the Word this week. I didn't have time to get to church. I didn't have time to pray with somebody. I didn't have time to fellowship. Can I tell you something? You don't have time not to. Amen? Put on Jesus. Amen. Enter into the spirit of might. Now, like David Hogan, when he's here, when he saves me a lot of money because he's always fasting, I went off to pay for a lot of meals. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. But he said something good to me. He said, I fast every day of my life. Different. He does fast a lot. Now, he eats one meal a day usually, right? But he fasts a lot. I said, why do you fast so much? He says, so my flesh doesn't reign in Jesus does. Amen. It takes faith of God to raise the dead. But see, that faith is in you. But we have to meditate on it to cultivate it. What you meditate on will cultivate the real you. Amen? Yes. If you meditate on weakness and inability, you will become weak and unable. Because you'll be strengthening your flesh. But if you meditate on the gospel, which is, again, I can't say it enough, the spirit of God in you by the Holy Ghost in the inward man and the faith love. Man, I tell you what, there's no one that's going to be able to stop you. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. This is an amazing verse. It's Christ in you. It's the exceedingly, abundantly, whoo, grace that works in you. Not in somebody else. I, I mean, it works in all of us. But what I'm saying, it doesn't work for a big name preacher, not you. Man. The, the blood's so powerful, it works in you. See, we need to understand we're accountable to walk in this. First of all, it's a privilege. But we're accountable to walk in, but it's for you. Amen? Can I tell you something? When you get to heaven, you're going to find out that you're not... You're not greeted on a curve. Well, you know, you, you know, I understand you come through the blood, but also you're gonna, you need to understand, and I need to understand, we're called to be conformed to the image of Jesus. Shh. Glory to God. Glory to God. As we close today, I, I just want to encourage us to be excited about what the gospel really is. And for those watching by television, those watching, those here, but especially right now, those by television, I sense a number of people, you've made excuses for your sin. And a number of you, you're just disillusioned. You want Jesus. You want to walk with Jesus. But you've been disillusioned because it hasn't worked. Well, it hasn't worked because you haven't worked it this way. And right now, if you're humble yourself and, and say, God, I never saw this. I've been trying to do it this way and through this technique and this, this, and this. But it only works through the spirit of might manifested through the Holy Ghost inside of me. Shh. Right now, just say this with me. If you're home on television, and first of all, if you're not saved, man, it's not going to work for you. So if you're not saved, just say, God, I need you. My life is a mess. I'm a mess. Forgive me for blaspheming your name. Change me. I not just accept you as Savior, I accept you as Lord. I give my life unto you. And I said so many walking with Jesus, but frustrated, disillusioned. Pray this with me right now. Say, I ask forgiveness for walking in my own strength and then calling it God's. And Lord, I ask you now through the Spirit of God Himself that cause the Spirit of might to reign in me in my inward man 
under faith, under love, under the fruits of the Spirit, under the gifts of the Spirit, under all of Isaiah 11. Right now, I ask in the name of Jesus that you would take me from one place and put me in another through the truth of what the gospel really is. It being about you and not about me. About your strength, your might, and not my own. I give you glory and honor and praise. For you, O oh God, you, O oh God, are the only one that can life me. It is not by might in the natural. It is not by power in the natural. It's by the might of God. Woo, hallelujah, amen. Can you stand with me and rejoice? Amen. Woo, hallelujah. Man, we need to couple this reality with praise and worship. Woo, glory to God with thanksgiving. Woo, hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Woo, thank you, Lord. Just, just take a minute and just, just thank Him and worship Him. Amen. That the spirit of might is in your spirit. Woo, glory. On the faith and love. Oh, we give you praise, God. God, we ask for grace to walk in this, to meditate on it with excitement and thanksgiving, to walk in it in reality, giving you all the glory. And grace is to let people know what the gospel really is. It's not an insurance policy that we've been given and then we just walk it out on our own. It's a person. Who? It's the Holy Ghost in us. Manifesting the person of Jesus. And the glory of the person of the Father. Mm. Glory to God. Who? Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We confess all things are possible. We confess, Father God, that the weapons of our warfare are greater than the weapons of the devil. That's why it says in Ephesians 6, be strong in the power of his might. Woo! Glory. Glory to God. Woo, Jesus. We're not ashamed of the gospel. For it's the power of God unto salvation. Lord, we love you so much. We give you praise and worship. We thank you, Father God. A little child, nine years old, can walk in this. David walked in it when he was a teenager. Woo, glory. Help us, God, to be excited about what the gospel really is. Every day, help us to walk in it in the name of Jesus, to the glory of God.